Hi, Ms. Burton. How are you doing today? Doing well, Chase. How about you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'll be asking you a series of questions and just try to answer them to the best of your ability. I will do that. All right. First question. What movie can you watch over and over without ever getting tired of? So that'd be Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. It's like five movies rolled into one, so I've probably seen it over 30 times, and every time there's something new. It's a very quotable movie, lots of good music, lots of funny lines. So Pulp Fiction is my go-to movie. Oh, good choice. Um, what food have you never eaten but would really like to try? Uh, so there's a food called Dragon Beard Noodles that comes from northern China. Uh, so these are noodles, they've been folded 4,096 times. So they're like really thin, they look like a dragon's beard uh, <laughs> when they're done. And they're only eaten on the second day of the second lunar month. So I'd like to try dragon beard noodles because I've never had those before. Oh, wow. Um, where are some unusual places that you've been to? Uh, probably the most unusual place is um, a little village in Iceland where it's the Icelandic Museum of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Um, in that museum they have a bunch of artifacts from like the magical time of Iceland before when they say like there's like trolls and giants and stuff who live yeah. there. Um, so that's probably the most unusual place I've ever been to. Um, the Winchester Mystery House is also an unusual place where I like to visit. So those are my top two interesting places that I've been to. Hmm. Never heard of that before. Well, I've got to check it out. <laughs> if someone narrated your life, who would you want to be the narrator and why? Morgan Freeman. Who wouldn't want their life narrated <laughs> by Morgan Freeman? He's the go-to narrator. Um, I like how he also throws a little bit of what's really going on, even with the narration that kind of goes contrary to what's actually happening in your life. So Morgan Freeman would be my number one narrator of my life. He's got a great voice, too. He does. Who do you feel like you know, even though you've never met them? Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. So I've done some pretty extensive research on Eleanor Roosevelt. Every year in my class, we do a project with Eleanor Roosevelt. So I feel like I know Eleanor pretty well, um, just from the books that I've read, her own autobiography, films that I've seen. So Eleanor is my girl. <laughs> what current trend makes no sense to you? Uh, dabbing. <laughs> I don't get, I've done the research, I'm a historian, so I understand the historical trends behind it. Um, so I, I don't get the appeal of that. Also, just a recent trend, eating Tide Pods, apparently is a, is a trend that I don't yeah. think very many people are doing, but it's been all over social media the last couple of days. So I don't get that one at all. I don't get that one either, but it's a thing. Um, what's the most physically painful thing you've ever experienced? So there's a little bit of a story that goes behind this. Back in the summer of 1998, I was camping in the Grand Canyon. Um, it was about 11.30 at night, and I had the most excruciating pain I've ever felt in my life. Um, it was essentially like someone was jamming an ice pick into my ear. Uh, woke up screaming what was going on, and there's, I could feel a movement happening as well in my eardrum. Um, so I'm pressing on my ear. I uh, don't know what's going on, but something is digging into my eardrum. Um, fast forward about two hours later, I'm in the Flagstaff Hospital emergency room, and they verify, yes, there is a beetle that had crawled into your ear and was like burrowing into your eardrum. Uh, so after it was surgically removed six hours later, I could safely say that that was the most painful experience of my entire life, having a box beetle burrow into my eardrum at the Grand Canyon. Yikes. <laughs> What's something you really resent paying for? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, probably my first clean canteen. I love clean canteen, they have a great product, but ever since then I've probably gotten a new clean canteen gifted to me um, every year in school. So I probably have about 15 clean canteen products that when I get a clean canteen, oh, thank you for this clean canteen that I have 14 of uh, already. <laughs> um, so oftentimes I re-gift those clean canteens, but that was probably, and I don't really regret that purchase, but it's something that I didn't need to purchase because yeah. I've received so many of them. Yeah. I have quite a few <laughs> clean canteens as well. Um, what was cool when you were young but isn't cool now? Um, there is a brand called Geneco Jeans, J-N-C-O. You may be familiar with them. Uh, so the opening of the foot of these jean code jeans was about 24 to 30 inches so kind of like bell bottoms but they were just gigantic pants um, that these guys would wear and they weren't very attractive but when you're going to a rave in the 90s you had to wear the <laughs> jean code jeans so 
And apparently they still exist, and they're collector's items now, but I'm glad that they are no longer popular, the Gene Crow <laughs> jeans. What artist or band do you always recommend when someone asks for a music recommendation? I enjoy the Pixies. So this was a post-punk, new wave, alternative band that started in the 80s, continued into the 90s, my favorite band of all times. Um, just a lot of fun music, a lot of witty banter on their albums as well. So you need to check out the Pixies. What's your favorite song by them? Ooh, there's so many. Gigantic, probably. It's probably one of their most favorite songs. Um, Valoria, Allison, lots of them. Nice. If you could communicate with a species other than humans, who would it be and why? I'd have to go with the doggos. So I got four dogs at home. I would love to know what they were talking about because I have two pugs who are like little old men. And then I have two younger uh, female dogs. And sometimes they get along great and sometimes they fight. And so I'd like to know, why are you fighting all of the time, <laughs> pugs? What life skills are rarely taught but are extremely useful? Uh, car maintenance and just how to jumpstart a car, how to change a tire. Uh, going back to Iceland, I had to change a flat tire in the fjords after we camped one night. So in pouring rain and mud, changing a tire on a Volkswagen camper van. Um, <laughs> if I didn't have that skill taught to me by my dad when I was a teenager, we would have been stuck in the middle of nowhere with a flat tire. What profession doesn't get enough credit or respect? I'd say custodians. So I try to treat our custodians here at PV very well. My dad's a custodian as well, um, and they work their butts off. They, they do a lot of stuff for the school, for the staff, for the kids, trying to make the schools the best place they can be, and they're not really given a lot of credit for all that they do. What are your biggest pet peeves? Um, this is a weird one, but when there's events going on and people say it's the first annual event, that really bothers me because it should be the inaugural event of an activity because <laughs> you can't have the first annual event without it happening before. Um, so whenever I see first annual, especially in like professional posters or things like that, it just really bothers me. <laughs> Probably my number one pet peeve. If you could spend one day with a famous person, past or present, who would it be and what would you want to do with them? Uh, Frida Kahlo. She'd be my number one choice and we would just paint and talk and have a good time. Uh, just learning from her and hearing her stories. She'd be the person I'd hang out with all day. Okay. What is your favorite word? My favorite word is hope because there's so much that hope can provide for. Uh, when I asked, actually asked her this question to my students, they're giving me all of these multi-syllabic huge words and I was like, I just want something simple. <laughs> hope is my word because without hope, nothing exists. You always have to have hope. You have to have the belief that something's gonna get better, or something can change. What is your least favorite word? Apathy. So when you just simply don't care enough to get involved or simply you know, don't even try anymore, apathy is my least favorite word. So whether it be apathetic students, whether it be apathetic people, um, just those folks who don't have the hope anymore and are ceasing to try. What sound or noise do you love? I love dead silence followed by huge eruptive cheers. So whether this be at a sporting event where everyone's holding their breath waiting for that big play to happen, uh, competing in Highland Games, there's often a time where the whole crowd is just captivated by what happens and then, you know, an implement lands or a caber flips and the cold crowd erupts in cheers. That's probably my favorite noise because it brings everyone together. Other than teaching, what profession would you most like to do? Um, I'll, I'd love to be a national park ranger. So kind of teaching in that sense, working at a national park, instructing people, just sharing information. Uh, when I retire from teaching, I do plan on becoming a national park ranger. So that'd be my number one job if I wasn't a teacher. What profession would you never want to do? Ooh, so this really is a hard one. I've worked a lot of gross jobs. I've worked uh, in fast food. I've worked delivering pizzas. Um, I really wouldn't want to work at a job where I just had to work by myself. So I can't give you a specific job, but a job where I like to have, like sit in a cubicle. So maybe oh, like yeah. answering phones or doing yeah, something like that, that would that drive job. me insane. That sounds awful. So that'd probably be the one job I would not want to do is something where I was just working in isolation. Thank you for the interview. I've learned a lot of fascinating things about you and I uh, hope we could do this again. You're very welcome. Nice talking with you. Thank you.